Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Grant Likely. I am the CTO of Lunaro, and thank you for the, the very kind invite uh, to be able to be here and, and talk. Um, Lunaro has been uh, working in the arms space for, um, for quite a while now, and we've been working with Open Euler for the last uh, uh, four years. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, First, a little bit of an introduction, if you're not familiar with, uh, with Lonaro. So Lonaro is uh, a company that was created uh, early on in around uh, 2010 for the ARM ecosystem. And, and back at that time, where ARM was starting to come up, ARM was uh, you know, being used heavily, but we were running into software problems. And we were running into problems where the, the software ecosystem, in order to use an ARM system meant there was a lot of pieces that were missing, the tool chains were broken, the kernel was, didn't work very well, it was a lot of work and a lot of uh, engineering uh, technical debt that was involved in building an ARM system. So Lonaro was formed as part of, we need to collaborate in order to solve these problems. These problems are bigger than any one company can do themselves. And so we got companies that were involved in the ecosystem, uh, ARM, IBM, Samsung, uh, Qualcomm, uh, that were, and others who were interested and uh, dependent on the ARM architecture to go and to fund engineering projects to fix things and get things working. So in the early days, it was a lot about tool chain. It was a lot about getting the Linux kernel up and running. It's about fixing our development processes and the way that we work together as software engineers to make sure that this this works. Um, my background is that in particular of I was a Linux kernel engineer and I worked on the, the device tree infrastructure, which was part of moving from every single time we do an ARM platform, we have to build a new kernel, we have to build a new user space, to being able to describe the platform uh, with the data file and then be able to use a single kernel to be able to boot all the all the platforms. Right. Uh, so that leads us to um, to Open Atom and Open Euler. We've been working quite closely with uh, with the uh, Open Euler developers um, for for quite some time, uh, from, starting from uh, twenty twenty one. Uh, and I've just got a few highlights here. And I, this is going to be pretty casual. I'm going to talk through some of the things that that we've been involved with. Feel free to interrupt me and and ask questions as we go through. Uh, but the, the key aspect of this and the key thread that kind of that winds through all of this is that for the ARM ecosystem to work, it depends on the collaboration. Uh, it depends on, it's no one company that is able to make everything happen and that it actually requires us to be working together and to enable the, the features and to enable the capability so that software application developers and software developers are able to make use of them without having to go and assemble it, it all themselves. And Lonaro's collaboration with Open Euler has been very much about that, of go and create the, uh, go and target very specific parts of the, the software stack that need some attention, that need some participation from, from other vendors, and then get that merged into the, into the mainline projects. Uh, this is a, a timeline. Um, I won't talk all the way through this we can you know if you have questions about the specific timeline we can talk more about that uh, separately uh, but a few of the highlights here um, uh, on the work that we've been uh, doing so the first one is kind of foundational of you know having open stack and being having that enabled in the open Euler uh, you know getting involved with that in the the, um, the mainline projects and the community there uh, and then going and working on particular areas that required acceleration and uh, enablement. Uh, so that includes the software-defined storage and UADK for, for accelerators. Uh, it includes big data. So we've been working with uh, Open Euler on, uh, on Hadoop and uh, uh, Spark, uh, Big Top. Um, uh, and then I'll get to the confidential computing in a moment. So the first one to highlight, uh, Right, OpenStack, as you know, is a cloud computing framework, and uh, this was to be for Open Euler to be relevant. We want, we needed to be able to uh, deploy workloads using using OpenStack. So we worked quite closely with uh, with the project 
to enable support in Open Euler and to uh, to build up the CI, to sign a, uh, the CLA with a uh, with the community and help getting Open Euler involved with the the OpenStack um, uh, SIG. And so we were doing that back in 2021. That very quickly led into a lot of the work that we've done on software-defined storage. Uh, now, the way that, if you, if you know, or I'll say a little bit about how Lunar was organized, is back in the early days, we, we worked on core things that were affecting all of the ARM architecture. And as those problems started to get solved, we then organized down into uh, segment groups to talk about particular parts of the market. Uh, and so one particular segment group that we have is we call it our data center group. And that is focused on the, the issues and problems on, uh, on server machines and what we were needing for that. And a big part of the uh, Open Euler and Open Atom priorities were making sure that software-defined storage was, was involved. So what, what we were doing here is that we had an engineering team that was going and bringing up the existing, uh, uh, <clears throat> the existing software-defined storage stacks on ARM, such as Ceph, Meadata, uh, Luster, um, and uh, BGFS, getting those up and running, proving that they first are functional on ARM and are functional on the platforms that, that Open Euler was running on, work with each of those projects to go and do optimization projects and make use of the features that are in the ARM architecture so that they run performant and can actually be used for real deployments, uh, and then get those, get those features merged back into the, into the mainline project. Um, and it's, it is a straight out optimization project where this decreases the gap and takes uh, an architecture from merely being functional, where you can use it, to being suitable for, for use in production system. And then by getting that into the mainline project, it means that this is now, you know, application developers are able to rely on it. It's, it's ready to go. Uh, and so you can see here, we started back in 2022 on a lot of the uh, um, software-defined storage work, and much of that work has now landed in the main projects as of 2024. Uh, another project that we have been working on is the UADK uh, Accelerator Development Kit for Accelerator Solutions. Um, we, in this case, we were working specifically on the uh, the Compang uh, processor to on the 920 to make sure that we're making use of the hardware accelerators in here. Again, this is seamless connecting. You're, you're going to hear. I'm saying, feel like I'm saying the same things with each of these slides because a lot of this is take the work that's already done, use the work that the community has been heavily involved with, make sure it runs well on the relevant hardware, and then close the loop by getting those features back into the mainline projects. Because if they're not in the mainline projects, it doesn't exist. Application developers aren't going to be able to use it. Uh, so this included work on OpenSSL, include DPDK. Bisheng, uh, JDK, uh, and landing all of those uh, in the projects. Um, once again, this is a place where it's not stuff that can be done alone, and this is where the collaboration between Lonaro, the other Lonaro members, and uh, Open Atom, uh, Open Euler, has been the only way that we can actually get this get this done. The the links with the mainline projects are what actually allows this makes this possible. Apache Big Top. This was another big project. Again, uh, a lot of optimization, bringing Big Top up on ARM platforms, making sure it works across the board, and then optimizing for for the specific platforms, uh, and giving Open Euler a seat at the table as we're talking about it. We started working on this back in uh, 2012, and uh, we now have, as of uh, 2024, we've got uh, native support in Open Euler for Big Top 3.3. Uh, and then the next thing that we've been done, and this, the, the previous projects that I've talked about have been very much about going and working on individual projects and getting them running. But one of the things as we're doing this that we learned and that there was a lot of demand for from the users of Open Euler is knowing what the, stat, what the status of these projects actually are. So we have uh, another project that was less on the engineering side and more on the reporting side of the state of uh, the state of data center, uh, server compute workloads running on the ARM platform. And that's where we created the, the Lonaro ecosystem dashboard, which is um, 
I don't actually have the URL up here, but you can go to the to the Lenara website and to find the link to the um, ecosystem dashboard. And this has been giving a status of all the different projects that have been worked on and that are up and running on, on ARM. So it becomes a central clearinghouse for anyone who wants to know what they've got available on the platform. They can go here and, and do that. Uh, and then that leads us to kind of the where we've that that covers what we've been doing so far with Open Euler. Um, and now we're talking about what comes next. And much of the ARM ecosystem on the server has been about catching up with what does what do we do on the other architectures and make sure that all of that runs. We're starting to get into some of the new places where technology is changing and new features and new capabilities are needed and we're involved with the, what does it actually look like. So in one of those areas is confidential compute. And if you're not familiar with confidential compute, this is a way of being able to create uh, more protected, more secure enclaves within a, a execution environment that cannot be, you cannot access the data from even the operating system or the uh, virtual ma machine manager that is that is hosting those. Uh, there are various forms of confidential compute that exist on different architectures. ARM's um, architecture is co confidential compute for ARM and it creates a concept of, of realms that are protected from, from the rest of the system. What is interesting with this one is not the, the features on the CPU, but working out the details of how do we actually use it? What is the working model to be able to use confidential computing on ARM platforms in a way that works with our distributed ecosystem? So rather than a single company, single CPU company, owning all of the confidential compute infrastructure, we now have a place where ARM has produced the architecture. We now need infrastructure in the ecosystem. We need a way to, we need a solution for the firmware that runs, that creates that protected environment and is, is trusted. We need a way to, uh, for uh, vendors, for the, the users of that, on how do they spin those up? How do they get access to uh, a realm, a protected realm on, uh, on a compute platform, say that's, that's in the cloud? And then how do you know that the, the realm that you've been provided with is actually secure. How do you do that at attestation? And to do that is going to require some open source, or there's going to require open infrastructure and attestation services that they can use to get attestation records from the platform they're running on and go get uh, a, a response to say, is this, is this valid? So we've been working quite closely with ARM, uh, with Open Euler, with uh, other um, uh, other companies that we're working with to create, to figure out what does this look like and stand up all of the infrastructure. So we're doing that within data center. This is very much ongoing right now. Uh, Open Euler has been involved from the outset of us doing this work, which we started uh, early this year. And as it matures and as we have the full stack stood up, then you're going to start seeing it. Then we'll start looking at landing it in the, um, in the operating systems and in the platforms. Right now, what we have is ARM has produced uh, models and the, the firmware that runs on them. Uh, we have enabled the CCA architecture in QMU, and that is now an open source code. And then we're uh, working on, as I said, all of that infrastructure and things that are needed to actually make use of CCA. Uh, and that's it. That's a very quick run through of what we've been doing at Lunaro and the collaboration. The, thing, the big thing, and I've said this already, the big thing that I want to highlight is all of these problems on making the software ecosystem work are collaborative problems. They are not problems that any one company can solve on their own. Uh, I feel very pleasure, uh, very um, privileged that we were that Lenaro has been able to be working with Open Euler and to help make sure that the things that are happening in the community as a whole is also happening with Open Euler. So, uh, and so, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to come and uh, share a little bit about this. And do you have any questions? Yes.
push the arm, uh, architecture more compatible with uh, like other existing uh, data, especially in the data center. I, I think we're at the place for the existing workloads, the things we're doing now. Most of it is optimization. All the functionality is there. All the things that we need exists, but it doesn't necessarily run performant. Uh, we have found that there's, uh, there's some one-on-one -on -one projects that we're doing with customers and that are optimization of the, the frameworks are there, the pieces that are there, but they need help with optimization and so we've been doing um, we've got some tools that we provide through Lenaro Forge that helps to, to compare performance between x86 and arm um, and so for the application vendors they're needing help to get up to the same level as they are on the other architectures the other thing that I think is interesting is where we're in to into new technology um, so how does an, how does open source confidential computing work. So, right, CCA is one of the, the big areas, and that is we're having to define what that is, and that's working it out as a community rather than using what one particular company has, has created. Uh, and the, the other one, uh, at the risk of sounding like I'm diving into hype around AI, I, I think AI is the, uh, is the place where a bunch of work needs to be done, where we have a lot of frameworks and we have accelerators that are being put into silicon for, for doing AI, but the, the quality of the implementations and how well it's enabled in the operating systems is very varied. It's, it's all over the place. So AI is a fundamental workload. Once the hype dies down, it's not going away. It's still going to be critical. Uh, what we need is we need more predictability so that application vendors are able to use it. Uh, most application vendors, they don't want to have to care about how do I enable device drivers for AI accelerators. They're wanting to focus on their application. And if the support for the accelerator isn't in their software stack, they're probably not going to use it or they'll go to a different solution. Anything we do with upstream projects, absolutely, we, we do with upstream. And the optimizations, there's still, within the open source projects, there's still optimization to be done. Um, and all of that, yes, absolutely, that goes into mainline. Okay, but uh, if the, I think most of the user will not use the latest version, so yeah. uh, if it's an old version, how do you expect it? I think that's, that's going to need to be very uh, targeted. That's going to need to be, you know, how, for example, with Open Euler, what are the priorities? What are the policies? Because we can backport all, you know, most of those performance optimizations can be backported into older versions. Uh, the question then I have is then what is there, what policy does Open Euler want to have for, for doing that? Because everything that we do to backport, right, it's work. It's additional work, it's additional maintenance. If it makes sense for the customers, then it probably makes sense to, to go and do, but that becomes more targeted. I still, you know, the, um, it still remains, I think, that the policy of getting into upstream first and then backport is far better than trying to do those optimizations in the existing releases because then they don't move forward, right? And that, that's, you know, I think we're all, we can all agree on that one. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much.